Let's have some fun here. Let's talk about ETs and aliens and stuff. This one is Rec Recognizing ETs 102, Dealing with Fear. I don't look too scary, do I? Nah, I didn't think so. Okay, this is from April 29th, 2010, third one of that day. The Mayan day was 12 read. Well, it looks like I've been well and fairly launched out into this ET business now. And that's okay. It's just that so many are running around rather frantic. Like some headless chickens, even. All worked up over this topic. Well, I'm not. <sighs> It's just a part of life, everyone. It's nothing new, for heaven's sake. ETs have been with us all along. Come on, did you really believe the government of all things? Surely not. Of course you didn't. That's why you're doing your own research, and good for you. We're all doing that, pretty much. Some on the inner and in their dream state but most of us on the outer, in conscious life. The reason I'm not racing into sharing with you who I found to be untrustworthy is that I'd much rather equip you to decipher this yourself. If you just trust, believe, and follow me, then what have you gained? I mean, you know, really. I'm not going to be here all the time. Just nothing, perhaps, but it's not the highest, which is the vision I have for each and every one of you. I have ET presence in the room here with me right now. They're a fact of life. Some call them guides, and that they are the ones of light. There are more of them by far than the other ones, the bad guys. It's pretty much like life here on Terra, planet Earth. There are plenty of bad guys out there, but us little guys, as they like to think of us, a.k.a. the good guys, far outnumber them. Them's the facts. Heck, just look around. Okay then, now why would it be any different with our star brothers, huh? Why, just why, my friends, would you choose to see all of them as either all black or all white? All dark or all light? What sense does that make? Not even heart sense, that's right. So, there are both kinds there, just like they're here. The cards are all quite stacked in our favor, you know. Don't get into this fear vibe I feel from some of you now. Oh, you think maybe I'm restricted to the time frame in which I'm journaling this? Well, think again. <laughs> or rather, don't think. Uh-uh. No, no, no. Get out of head back into the heart with you. Come on, I mean it. Takes just a second now, center down. Okay, to continue. No, I'll take a detour, which isn't really a detour because this is important. I want you to accept something or absent that to at least set your intent to eventually accept this. You are a fearless being. You literally cannot be harmed in any way. Now say it with me. I am a fearless being. I cannot be harmed. There. Until you can both say and believe this, actually know this, my friends, you will be somewhat vulnerable. Them's the facts. Furthermore, fear is the biggest bummer around. It is how they manipulate you, me, us, them, until they can't, 
until we escape their nets. Ha <laughs> ha! That's what we're after here. Now, fear isn't always something you just walk away from. It isn't something you just stuff down and refuse to deal with either. Yes, there's the rub. Back in heart, please. There are two things acting here. One is self-definition. If you're fearful, then you have no idea even who and what you are. It is literally that simple. Nor can I help you there. I've said and shared enough on this topic, and I'm sure that will continue. But there is no simple formula. Some little something you will come upon somewhere that will all of a sudden define you for you. That's mind looking for that. It takes some work, some exploration, some investigation on your own. You've got to do that. I am that was my best resource by Nizargadatta, along with Eckhart Tolle, but they're no magic combination either. There is no magic pill or potion, no secret formula or mantra that is going to suddenly reveal this for you. So do the work. Just set your intention and go from there. The other thing that's acting is fear. So back to that. As I've already shared, fear shares no part of your real being. Per that last paragraph, you'll be seeking out your real being. So that will eventually take care of that. But meanwhile, what to do with fear? Hmm. Well, my best advice is to enter heart space. Fear can't come in. No, not one bit, drop, or iota will you find there. None at all. Zip, zero, nada. The thing is, however, that as soon as mind activates, or as soon as fear pops up, your lickety split plop out of heart space and back into head. That's how it works until you're identifying with heart. Then you can look at fear and stay in heart. That's why I keep saying that if you are experiencing fear of any kind or if you're off in thought, it's a pretty clear indicator you're not in heart. You're in the mind, and I'm stepping out of the journal here to say you do reach a certain point where you can be heart-centered and observe these things passing by. You can see them, but you don't really entertain them. You're not in them. You don't feel them. You just watch. Okay, back to the journal. Now, how to deal with fear on a deeper level. Okay, you sit with it. You let it have its say. You just observe yourself the whole time. You watch what's acting. You watch it closely. That's all. Center down the best you can, which is to set your intent to do so, and then just sit with whatever arises. Darkness will arise, my friends. If you're not willing to face it, then this isn't the path for you. This ain't for no sissies. <laughs> this is what frustrates me just a bit with the positive thinkers among us, the one who won't let a dark thought grace their awareness. As I've said, every coin has two sides and every 3D being does too. It's a mandatory part of this existence. But anyway, back to center. Eckhart Tolle is the best teacher for this that I've found, bar none. There's other really great ones too, but he's great. He calls it being in the present moment. Works for me. Call it what you like, it doesn't matter. Let's just begin to recognize that we do have some darkness 
and that in order to walk the path of light, if we want to phrase it that way, you will have to deal with at least some of your own darkness. Quite a lot of it will be simply burned up by the light that you are once you release that. The heart and other chakras burn so brightly they intensely heat up at times. That is darkness being burned off, my friends. Flow re-arising. It's like an atomic furnace in there at times. Can get mighty uncomfortable too. But there is an important portion, say 10%, that you'll be made to face because it's mandatory for your learning, for your growth. You don't want to go recreate this stuff. Well, got to learn some stuff then. You have to do this. So sorry if this is bad news. And if you thought this was all going to be sweetness and light, I mean, it is that, but not without this other. So the best thing then may be to just see if you can accept this. Accept the concept that you may have to stand or sit and face your <clears throat> stuff. It doesn't help much on the front side of this to tell you that on the other side of it, you will see how each fear, each pain brought blessings of greatest kind. Still, I'll close with that, for it's the truth, the way I see it. I'm a firm believer, experiencer, knower that there's nothing but blessings even possible here. That's right. Even 9-11 and whatever else you care to name, I'll find blessing in it. So will you too, seeing from heart. I know of a teacher who is so good at sharing this. It's Byron Katie. So if you're stuck here, I'll provide some links to things of hers to give you a taste and it may help. I'll throw one or two of Muji and Ganga G in as well, stepping out of the transcript again. You have to expect that these days. Anything I'm recording from now on, it seems to be blending some of the live with what's written. Back to the transcript. Bottom line, though, is just keep centering down. Set your intent to be and to live and abide ever in heart space and just keep quietly coming back to that whenever you get thrown off base. I'll close with the mantra for sovereignty which I often use for this very purpose and just to bless all things I do and keep me centered. I am a sovereign being exercising free will as I ascend the spiral of life, I intend that the higher purpose be served and that the light prevail. Good day.